Roman V. Uh, Yam Polinsky, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, he's been on the uh, broadcast before, uh, is a computer engineering and computer science professor uh, and director of cybersecurity lab. And we're going to get into his whole uh, uh, bio and exactly where he works now. He's worked all over the place. And he's the guy that... He's the guy that a few years ago started coming out and saying, look, we're going to end up having a Skynet type uh, of scenario here if all of this continues. And now it's all coming true. I mean, here are some of the articles that I've got that we'll be showing TV viewers on the document cam. Uh, forget to take your medication. These pills will tell your doctor. Um, I mean, it just goes on and on with your your. Uh, smart meter watching you in your house and ground penetrating radar. The establishment is putting the architecture of control in so they can control us with the technocracy. What the professor uh, has pointed out uh, is that uh, what's happening here is that the machines uh, could actually do this. And I know I, I butchered your bio, sir. What, what, what's most important for viewers out there to know about you? I'm a computer science uh, professor. I do research in artificial intelligence and security. That's pretty much what they need to know. And I know you've worked at, at, at quite a few universities. Uh, currently, uh, where are you a professor? I'm at the University of Louisville, uh, Department of Computer Engineering and Computer Science. So the same place when we had you on last time? Yep. Wow. I mean, since you uh, wrote about that a few years ago, it's really become a bigger issue and we hear about all these backdoor chips and things. Uh, what do you think about what the establishment has decided to do with the architecture uh, of uh, the technotronic state? Uh, are you asking me if there are backdoors and majority of technology? Sure, I mean, what is your view of, 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 of the design, the overall design of the technological system being put in? Uh, can you be a little more specific about uh, which aspects you... Sure. I mean, look, the entire grid is being built so they can spy on us and control us and, and, and remote control our cars, everything else. This looks like it's tailor-made for an artificial intelligence to be able to take over. It does require something capable of processing massive data, big data as we know it. Uh, it's not possible for a human being to monitor all the databases, all the sensors, so it definitely would require some sort of intelligent technology as far as is it uh, specifically built for this purpose, or is it just a side effect of uh, having more and more technology in our lives? I'm not really sure about that. Again, Professor Jan Polsky is our guest. Uh, this is just a short segment. We'll get more into detail in the next segment. If people want to check out your work, uh, what is the best place to go to? Uh, uh, Louisville.edu, and then just go to the computer engineering and science program that you had up? Uh, just Google uh, Google my name, Roman Yampolsky. I'm sure you can put it up on the screen. Uh, also, my new book, Artificial Superintelligence, A Futuristic Approach. First hit on Google. Just look for that. That's what I wanted to get you on about uh, today. And then I've been so sideswiped by all this Hastings news coming out. But let's briefly speak about that. Uh, the former head of national security, uh, Richard Clark, has said these new cars can be taken over and remote controlled. DARPA admits that. Uh, and some are saying he may have been remote controlled and run into the tree. I'm not even saying that's what happened. It looks like a car bomb to me. My issue is that shows how our society is being taken over. You can definitely have uh, ways to hack uh, medical devices, self-driving cars, anything which is autonomous can be hacked and compromised and taken over in principle. I just have a feeling of, of dread uh, about what's going to happen with all this going in. It is uh, dangerous, but this is exactly where my research comes in. I'm trying to make those systems safer, more secure, uh, combining security and artificial intelligence in one area of research. Well, I know you're a leading expert who really isn't even negative. You just go from a more realistic angle than somebody like Ray Kurzweil that just says, it's going to be wonderful. Heaven, we're going to live forever. There'll be no problems. Put the robots in charge now. I'm going to be God. And that's a quote. I don't believe in God yet. I'm going to be God. We're going to come back, sir, and talk about your new book, uh, which I need to get and read, and, and talk about real scenarios of what we could face if we don't get control of this uh, technological development. 
Now you can watch Alex Jones live at Infowars.com forward slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. You can also browse the network, the Infowars Nightly News, and over 60 movies and documentaries all together in one place. You can watch the Alex Jones Radio Show live as it happens. So check it out, Infowars.com forward slash show. We're back live, ladies and gentlemen, and we are talking to a professor uh, who is breaking down uh, exactly uh, what he believes from his deep research we're facing. Uh, and uh, Professor, uh, continuing uh, uh, here today, uh, talk about your book. Talk about you know the wide-ranging uh, situation that we're dealing with. So the book really is about what the future of artificial intelligence is going to bring. Most people agree that in the next 20 to maybe 100 years, we're going to see something developed on the level of human intelligence. How is that going to change society? How is that going to impact all of us? My book aims to make sure that the humanity is going to benefit from this technology, not get hurt in some really significant way. So that's essentially the main, main theme of a book. It discusses ways we can make those technologies safer, uh, hack-proof them, uh, make them serve common people. Break down for the common person out there exactly the type of uh, scenarios that could unfold and have already unfolded uh, with these systems. So if you uh, realize the number of different jobs we have outsourced to artificial intelligence systems, uh, they can already control nuclear power plants, airlines, uh, stock trading, essentially uh, anything of significance is not done by people anymore. And this trend only gets more and more severe. At some point, we'll have computers controlling everything. And if there is a bug in a system or if an enemy hacks into the system, this could have devastating effects on, on the whole society. And, of course, that really, from my research, has been the DARPA plan the whole time. Get the whole world to adopt this system, build back doors into it. The West then builds the giant cybersecurity commands to offensively take over the world professor uh, and then build the back doors in to where they can use it to suppress and track the general public and even predict the future of mass movements. Uh, that's basically, from my research, what the Pentagon admits they're doing. I am not familiar with any insider plans. I can notice things like NSA distributing cryptographic algorithms, which seems like a counterintuitive thing since they're trying to break those. So if there was a back door and their hashing algorithm, for example, I wouldn't be surprised. Professor Yampolsky is our guest, and you can find out more about him by checking out uh, his book, and we'll put a screenshot up on uh, the screen for people uh, that are watching us on television so they can uh, get the name of that book. It's Artificial Superintelligence, a Futuristic uh, approach, and you can actually see one of the, the professor's interviews with us right there. Skynet rising, the AI threat to humanity exists. My issue is: Are you more concerned about breakdowns in the system, uh, or or governments using these to dominate, or an actual uh, AI uh, type artificially aware uh, system coming online, and, and then that that decides to take us out like Terminator? All of the above. My job is to make sure everybody's safe so I can't ignore any opportunities, any options. Uh, it's uh, easier to study and easier to justify uh, scenarios where someone is hacking into the system externally. Something like a self-aware AI system going crazy is really futuristic. We're not quite at that level yet. But uh, something like a government putting a back door to control the system, that's quite realistic, that's standard computer security. Professor, what do you think of what Ray Kurzweil has to say? Because for me, it's more like a comic book, the way he puts things out, and he admits he's starting really a new religion, and they're saying you'll either merge with the machines or you'll be stepped on like a bug, uh, and, and, and they're selling this utopian view. But when I look at the real technological development and what the establishment says they're really building, it's more in line uh, with something like Elysium, the new movie coming out with uh, Matt Damon. 
Uh, Kurzweil is probably the world's number one expert in that field. I mean, he's amazing at predicting what future of technology is going to be. He precisely predicted the year a computer will defeat a, a human chess uh, champion. He predicted a lot of other technologies. Uh, he is, in my opinion, somewhat overly optimistic about how beneficial technology will be without uh, spending as much time on possible negative side effects, which I think are just as important. Uh, with his recent appointment as head of engineering at Google, he definitely has financial resources and other capacity to uh, make a lot of his uh, dreams come true. I wouldn't be surprised if they had a very successful AI program at Google as a result of uh, Ray Kurzweil's work. But my issue is the technocrats, I've studied who's running this, and they openly say we may just get rid of everybody once this new level of evolution takes place. We're talking about genocide here and people playing God, and I don't think the public is even aware that Ray Kurzweil is able to predict a lot of what's coming in the future because he's an insider and kind of their front man. He's obviously a, a, a very smart, a big inventor. He is basically the public face of what they're planning to do is my point. I mean, I'm not even an engineer. I go off of what they say they're going to do. And so that's why he knows so much about the goals. I mean, he wants a technocratic world government run by an AI supercomputer where, where we're reportedly going to be given eternal life by giving up our humanity and merging with machines. Sounds like a nightmare to me. Well, even according to Kurzweil, it's not going to happen until 2045. What's going to happen more uh, in the near future is actually beneficial improvements. For example, people with disabilities might get uh, their abilities back. Blind people would be able to see, paralyzed people able to walk. We're already starting to see a lot of this. So uh, there is a lot of benefit to this technology. Of course, like any technology, it can be abused, abused by governments, develop super soldiers, all sorts of things. But it's important not to cast all of uh, technology, all of uh, progress as bad, there is definitely a very significant benefit all of us can gain from those techniques. What about the general public uh, with lowered IQs, lower intelligence? Uh, they're calling it basically computer fog. The language is already shrinking. Uh, people are already having their brains rewired at a young age in a bad way. I mean, uh, Alzheimer's connected to TV watching. I mean, I really see a lot of what computers are doing is dehumanizing us and hurting us. It's not really doing what Ray Kurzweil said. There is a lot of negative side effects, and especially with kids, I'm personally very concerned about putting robots in a classroom because those things are not tested. We don't know if we're going to get a whole generation of children with autism as a result, how it impacts their ability to uh, judge body language. So. It is definitely something to look into and have review boards. We shouldn't just uh, push this new technology on kids. Uh, that being said, uh, again, we are using technology right now for this interview. There are clearly awesome benefits to technology if it's used properly. So the important part is to strike this balance between uh, the dangers of technology and amazing benefits. As far as this uh, divide between people getting dumber if uh, they abuse technology and others getting too much power because they have access to technology, it seems that the pattern is for technology to get uh, cheaper exponentially. So more and more people uh, who are not uh, rich necessarily get access to top-notch uh, technology. Take uh, cell phones. 20 years ago, only the super rich would have a cell phone. Now everyone has a smartphone. A uh, farmer in Africa would have more uh, information access than the U.S. president had 20 years ago. That's incredible. Even if people are not as well educated, they still have a lot more tools at their disposal. They are better connected. So, again, it's a two-edged sword. We need to look at both sides. Again, my issue is that they're putting all this backdoor tech to spy on us in all the major electronics, and then we're having to pay for this because of this corporate standardization i'm saying professor i see the architecture of the system being built in a predatory way that's my concern 
And you might be right, I'm not an expert on that, but the only tool we can use to protect ourselves is yet more technology. If you're saying there is a backdoor in that cryptographic protocol, we need to develop a better open source cryptography to protect people. So we can't turn away from technology, we have to embrace it and uh, take it away from government hands and do it ourselves. Do it Let me ask Take you it. this, Professor. Do you, in your gut, do you think humanity is going to make it or do you think we're going to destroy ourselves? I think we're going to make it. Uh, we might change ourselves in the process, not quite as radically as what uh, Ray Kurzweil might suggest with cyborgs, but we're definitely going to come to rely on technology a lot more. Uh, our education system will change from memorizing information to learning how to search for information. We'll really learn to use uh, robots and computers a lot more as tools and assistance for our everyday life. So really in many uh, high complexity occupations we'll see robot human teams working together. A doctor controlling a robot surgeon or something like that. Sure. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of positive things there, but the, 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 the globalists don't want the poor people to have access to this revolution. That's why they plan to set up a world government, forcibly reduce world population, and then go forward into the next age of man, uh, as they call it. I, I mean, take Foxconn, run by the liberal trendies, who are really authoritarian monsters of Apple, uh, with Al Gore on their board. They have the most oppressive factory subcontractors and demand the highest uh, dehumanization programs available. And then the suicide nets. And so, so many people commit suicide and they drug them and do forced abortions at the Foxconn reportedly. Uh, that now they've just ordered, as you know, uh, millions of robots and are now replacing the humans with them. So uh, I don't see that nexus point meeting where, where, where we bring in robots and then we just do more advance things instead we just get killed and, and and i think that's the the path that's been chosen and ray kurzweil's not going to tell people that but that's that's actually in the deeper literature and uh bill joy wrote about this uh, back in uh, about, about 13 years ago you know, the, the head of sun microsystems for those that don't know uh, in why the future doesn't need us uh, article and he said he talked to colleagues and the you know do we keep people alive or just let them play games all day or do we get rid of people and, you know, most of them said, let's get rid of everybody. So, I mean, I don't know. I think that might be something we should talk about. It is, and it's exactly what my book is about. That's exactly the questions it raises. Uh, what can we do to make sure that we are needed in the future? How can we make sure that those technologies are not given too much power? That's exactly my concern. Well, uh, when I heard about your book, I wanted to get you on. I, I didn't know that it's not out yet, uh, and, and, and I really want to support it. And you need people's support to get it out. Uh, artificial superintelligence, a futuristic uh, approach. And uh, how do people uh, make sure uh, that the book gets out? So it's a crowdfunding campaign. I'm making it open to everyone. They can contribute. In fact, there is an option to become a contributor to the book. Uh, just uh, Google it. Google the title of the book. It's an Indiegogo, which is a crowdfunding site. And uh, you can contribute as a supporter. You can uh, pay towards uh, proofreading of the book. Uh, the more contributions we get, the sooner we'll be able to release the book, the cheaper it would be to print multiple copies. Uh, essentially, I'm looking for a lot of input from top researchers. I already collaborated with quite a few people. You can see on the website exactly with whom. Uh, but I attend all the top conferences in the field. I present at all the top workshops. I really know what the state of the art is. I spend, oh, I know. That's why we get you on, and that's why I guess... Uh, I spent the summer working with Ray Kurzweil at Singularity University. I know exactly what their process is. I work with people criticizing him. I work with people admiring him. I really try to come uh, as an impartial scientist and uh, disregard the political aspect of it, but find technical solutions to the problem. We can sure, sure. I didn't even know that you've worked with Ray Kurzweil. Um, and, and I know you've written several other books. Uh, but again, I, I don't want to sit here and judge Ray Kurzweil and say he's a bad guy. It's just that he's always promoting world government and, 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 and you know, pushing all this. And I recognize the stuff he's pushing. I was reading about 100 years ago from the Fabian Socialist and their plan for the world. And you got to hand it to them. They wanted to discover what made humans tick. They went out and found out DNA. Uh, but then you see, you know, the type of stuff Watson that discovered it says. And, and I, I just know it's eugenics based. And in the 40s, after World War II, the eugenicists remade themselves as transhumanist. And I just know that there's a very arrogant anti-human bent in these people. And they've decided we're junk. 
and they've decided they're going to decide our course. I just think the public should have a debate about this. And that's what I like about you, Professor, is that you're trying to have that debate. I couldn't agree more. I mean, I talk to people all the time. I just had a lecture to high school students who are considering computer science. And those are the questions I mentioned to them. They are going to decide our future. They are going to be the ones designing those systems. What type of moral values do they put in robots, in military robots? Uh, what can a drone do? Are they autonomous? Are they requiring human supervision? Can we have a politician who is a robot? There are lots of questions we need to debate as society, and those are not easy questions. Roman Yampolsky is our guest uh, here today. I, you know, I've been asking a lot of questions, uh, Professor. What are points that uh, you'd like to make that we haven't gotten to yet? Uh, I definitely want to give opportunity to all your listeners to participate in a project. They can follow me on Twitter, Facebook. Uh, I post constant updates about the uh, project, how it's going. I'm always looking for talented students to join the lab. So that's another opportunity if any students are interested in doing a PhD, master's thesis uh, in my cybersecurity lab. Uh, as far as the topics, uh, again, we tend to concentrate on what uh, our biases, our background leads us to. Some people see it as it's going to kill everyone. Some see it as a heaven and immortality. We need to realize that reality is going to be somewhere in the middle. We're going to use those technologies to benefit us. And if we're smart enough, we're not going to end up in an existential catastrophe of some kind where we'll have a Terminator-like scenario. Ideally, we'll manage to avoid that. But we exactly. But if they've got thirty thousand drones last time I checked, of the Predator and Reaper class, and they're moving the troops to to robots, I mean you can already see the plan to make us obsolete. That's my point. Is that the major corporations uh, do not have a good view, and 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 currently I believe from the evidence we're on a very bad path. Uh, that's my point. There's a lot of. Uh common sense uh, things I can agree with you on. Uh, definitely it's dangerous, definitely it needs to be looked upon. There needs to be oversight, not necessarily government oversight, but research oversight. We have uh, research review boards for medicine, for nuclear, for chemical weapons, bioweapons. We need something similar for projects related to nanotechnology, uh, synthetic biology, artificial intelligence, robotics. Uh, not any type of research should be fully funded by the government where nobody knows what the outcome of it is going to be. And now you sound like President Eisenhower. I want to come back and talk about the NSA and, and, and the fact that any engineer that works in telecommunications tells you the sp these spy hubs are there. So, uh, I mean, I know you're non-political, but I want to get your take on the NSA. And when you talk about synthetic biology, um, that's really, from what I've seen, where they're going. Viewers have demanded it, so now you're gonna get it. More pro Second Amendment gun shows in the month of June. What we've learned is you cannot hide behind an I beam when there's a 50 cal present. Brothers in Arms, 50 cal ammo review and more coming in the month of June to the Info War. Um, briefly, efoodsdirect.com forward slash Alex is where you can find the biggest special I've ever seen them do. Free shipping, and when you buy three, you get one free of any of their huge line of the best storable foods on the planet. And if you're not storing food, if you're not having backups, you're crazy with all the stuff going on in the world, efoodsdirect.com forward slash Alex or 800-409-5633, 800-409-5633, or follow the banners on infowars.com and prisonplanet.com. Free shipping. Uh, it's only going for another four days, five days till the end of the month. And uh, also uh, buy three, get one uh, free. Just amazing deal. And lastly, infidelbodyarmor.com. Amazing body armor, a chromatic or ceramic, only stops six rounds on average. This stops hundreds from AK-47 up to 308 and more. 
InfidelBodyArmor.com and their Patriots, 888-608-6605, 888-608-6605. They've got a lot more than just body armor there. They've got body armor backpacks, a huge line. Check them out, InfidelBodyArmor.com. Uh, going back to the professor, um, Dr. We only got a few minutes left here, but specifically looking at the NSA, the fact that they call it national security, that these illegal spy grids, and they are illegal, are in everywhere, and then people are traitors that, he didn't give away our missile secrets, he didn't give away how fast aircraft carriers can cruise, how many knots. He said, hey, they're doing illegal stuff. That's always been protected. What's your view on Snowden? I mean, I think terrorists always knew we're spying in them, so he didn't really tell them anything new, in my opinion. I know bin Laden never used cell phones, never used email, always relied on snail mail, and that's why he was so successful at avoiding capture for years. Um, as far as uh, normal people, I mean, I was raised in Soviet Union. I pretty much assumed government is always spying on you anyway, so um, also I don't see much of a revelation there. I don't have any political uh, statement to make as to whatever my judgment is in his uh, actions. I just don't see it as uh, something very novel. By the way, Lindsey Graham has come out and called for reading people's mail now. <laughs> a physical mail. I mean, that's up on Infowars.com. Enemy of Freedom, Lindsey Graham says he would support censoring mail for national security purposes. They call it censoring to dig through your mail. I mean, there is just, and now they're saying Al-Qaeda knows our secrets now. Our government's running Al-Qaeda in Syria, folks. I mean, this is all such a sick joke. Professor, in closing, um, that's where I see the big advances is in this synthetic uh, biology. That, that, that's what I'm really concerned about. It could be very, very beneficial. Again, we can get rid of a lot of genetic disorders. We can design much better uh, plants and foods and medicines, but it could also create horrible biological weapons. It could create uh, terrible mutations, which we cannot test for multiple generations of human life. It takes too many years. So they test for a year or two and they release those products. So that could be potentially very, very dangerous. Wow, you know your stuff because I've studied it. Yeah, you can have the change in one generation, but by three, it, it does something completely different. I mean, it is Russian roulette all over the place. Uh, I wish your book well. People should uh, go check it out. Artificial Superintelligence, a Futuristic Approach to Help Get It Published. Thank you so much, Professor. Thank you so much. We'll be right back. Thank you so much for having me. Johnny Appleseed was born during the Revolutionary War. He's not just a legend. And in more than five states, he introduced apples that had not even been grown in the colonies. Later, the seeds from plants he planted and cultivated and some of the varieties he developed spread across the United States. And it was Johnny Appleseed teaching the colonists and then the new Americans after we won independence the love of planting fruit trees that introduced that idea to North America. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a revolutionary act to unplug from the television, to unplug from the computer and all the globalist propaganda and to go out in your backyard or your front yard or planters at your apartment or on the roof of the building where you live and to plant a garden. Become the Johnny Appleseed of your community with seeds from the InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsStore.com. The simple act of planting fruits and vegetables and then tending them and taking care of them and then sharing them with friends and family is a revolutionary act against tyranny. The globalists, first and foremost, do not want us to be self-sufficient. The crony anti-free market capitalist, the fascist, are using socialism and collectivism to shut down societies. Stalin in Poland and in Ukraine and other areas starved on record more than 10 million people over five years by not letting them grow their own crops and collectivizing them. Mao killed between 65 million and 80 plus million people doing this same thing. The UN says they will use food as a weapon. They use genetic evil to attack the earth and major GMO companies have been caught 
going into growth belts around the world, even where GMO is illegal, and planting seeds everywhere to infect the genetics of the original crops. Almost all of the thousands of varieties of Mexican corn has been infected. They are in a genetic war against everyone. That's why we have to get these seeds and not just plant them on our own gardens and not just give them as gifts to friends and family to plant spring and summer and fall gardens. I'm calling on you to go out into the green belts, to go out into the areas and plant secret gardens. No, not of marijuana, but of the hundreds and hundreds of incredible high quality uh, vegetables and herbs and fruit plants that are here. Lemons and oranges, the list goes on and on. They will grow, uh, plum trees, grape trees, they will grow almost everywhere in the U.S. We can literally, not just buying these products from InfoWarsStore.com, but from wherever you get them. This aggressive program literally just came to me one morning when I woke up about 4 a.m. realizing that we've got to counter their genetic war against us with original real crops developed over eons on this planet. We have the lowest prices we bought it in the biggest bulk that some of these companies have ever seen to ship this directly to you from the InfoWars Command Center. We stand for life. We stand for liberty. We stand for self-sufficiency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com, click on the Seed Center, and as of taping this, we have the seven top respected brands. We intend to continue to do research and find other companies, other specialties, other varieties to really take action. The InfoWars Store Seed Center has the largest online selection of heirloom, non-GMO seeds. Check out these products from our newest supplier, Heirloom Organics. The Medicine Garden for a natural remedy. The Tea Garden that contains every important tea herb you can grow. Fruit Lovers with 12 varieties. And the Tobacco Pack, additive and pesticide free. Join the gardening revolution today at InfoWarsStore.com. This is a revolutionary action we're asking you to take. Plant seeds everywhere today. Nurture them, bring them to fruit, and pass on the knowledge to others. Become human again. Discover your roots in the soil. And remember, the revolution against tyranny is growing.